Hey, everybody. Dave Hagan here. Happy Financial Awareness Day. That's today on the Financial Wellness Podcast, Coronavirus Edition. Welcome to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to the financial success. Here is your host, financial problem solver and talk show host, Dave. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Financial Wellness Podcast. We're coming to you today from beautiful downtown Van Nuys, California, from Lake Arrowhead, California, from San Diego, California, and from Seattle, Washington. Let's see who's with us. Nicholas Appel, how you doing, Nick? Hey, Dave, good to be here. Hey, man, good to have you. Nick's appearing more and more on the show. He's our announcer, and uh, it's good to have you. Good to have you here. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it, <laughs> and I always appreciate the open invitation. Always a pleasure. And from Seattle, Washington, Brian Reed, as always. Brian, how you doing? Good evening, David. How are you? No, I'm good. I'm good. You've been away for a couple of weeks. Do you enjoy your couple of weeks away from the podcast? I uh, well, obviously, I've missed you all immensely, but it's been good to spend a little time uh, with the family up here. And uh, you know, I'll be headed back uh, very soon. Excellent. And finally, we just said, "Shine, just pull out the computer. Let's do this whole thing." Sure. <laughs> Game on. All right, well, let's talk about Financial Awareness Day. I got to tell you, about six, eight months ago, I'm sitting in the dentist chair and the guy comes out and wishes me happy National Donut Day. And I'm thinking, this is kind of odd, a sugary donut from a dentist. And uh, I hope I don't have a mouthful of donut if the dentist is going in there to take a look. But that was his thing. He's into every single day wishing people a happy whatever day. And it turns out that there's a day for almost everything. Like March 8th this year, International Women's Day. Why international? I don't know. Could be just national. Could be California. Could be Arizona. I don't know. But it was International Women's Day. Of course, April 22nd this year, Earth Day. Is that like the original day? You guys remember when we first had Earth Day and they had all these like protests and stuff? I thought it was in the summer. No, no, it's in the spring. I'm pretty sure. It says right here, April 22nd, right on the website. Just saying. There are protests? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they had protests and events and, you know, like save the earth and save the ozone and yeah, all that stuff. Earth Day, the original The original day. How about May 15th this year? National Endangered Species Day. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. June 18th, playing off of that. National World's Oceans Day. Why not Pacific Ocean? Again, I don't know. (laughs) September 18th, International Day of Democracy. I kind of hope every day is a day of democracy, but that's a different discussion. I have a question. Yeah. What what body of people are creating these international days and it is it like the is it nato is it (laughs) who what is you know international day of democracy i don't Brian, you you can go to their website and buy their calendar man i I, I was (laughs) just gonna say i I was just gonna say i was on the website and i found june 7th as being national bourbon day bourbon day i like your thinking i like your thinking how about you brian any any faves that you can think of well, I would like to know when uh, International Brian Day is, but I know, I know. Is, you know I, I don't think that's on that list. You know, it, it used to be I'm working on that. Administrative Assistant Day, and then I'm thinking when uh, when is the Bosses Day? Now they have a Bosses Day, and um, I don't know. November fifteenth, National Philanthropy Day. Now that sounds good, right? I can get that. Yeah. Better than better than Bourbon Day. How about February first? National Get Up Day. Well, that's a, yeah, that's a lot what? of work. Uh, I, I, I take that as a challenge, Dave. I, I don't appreciate that comment. <laughs> August, August 6th, International Root Beer 
float day. I love August 6th then. You got to have it. You got to have it. October 13th, National No Bra Day. Uh, August 16th, National Tell-A-Joke Day. <laughs> well, was that a joke, Dave? <laughs> I think it was a joke. All of these different days. But, you know, recently, just a couple days ago, and that's why we're talking about this on the podcast, a couple days ago, August 14th, just last, what was it, Friday, National Financial Awareness Day. Happy Financial Awareness Day, guys. Hey, Thank you, Dave. Financial Awareness Day. Uh, were we financially aware? I retroactively am that it was simply aware of the 14th being National Financial Awareness Day. I, I second ahead, that. I knew it ahead of time, but you know, I didn't I didn't feel any different because you know why? Every why? day you're every always day, financially every, aware. <laughs> every day is financial awareness day to us guys, right? So I'm checking out the website and the website says, how much would you like to bet that most people don't know August 14th is National Financial Awareness Day? It's more important than you think. And plus, what's more fun than financial independence? First off, think about the great feeling you get when you don't have the looming specter of debt hanging over you. Also, sound financial decisions can really make a difference down the road. Remember, retirement is a time to take all those vacations you couldn't when you were working the daily grind. Because money is important to our overall peace of mind, Financial Awareness Day is a great time to review where you are now and where you're going financially. Don't let bad financial decisions ruin the best years of your life. All right, I get it. I get it. Now, this description's a little maybe superficial for what we do here at TFWP, but I think you get the point. They're talking about a lot of stuff that we talk about all the time, the, the great feeling of having no debt and sound financial decisions making a big difference down the road. And retirement is a time when you can do what you want to do. And money is an important piece of overall peace of mind. All stuff that we talk about all the time so i think it's it's a good thing better than root beer day just saying <laughs> well that's debatable <laughs> <laughs> i love i love them both david i love them both did you ever have as a kid a root beer float with a and w root beer absolutely oh know. my absolutely. god was that the best or what well there's a and w and there's also that was it barks barks I don't know if I had Bark. Dads had dads. I remember something about Barks had more caffeine in it or something. So it gave you more of a jolt than the other ones. A caffeine and a sugar buzz. So I can't, you know, don't hold me to that. I could be misremembering things. So, <laughs> so I'm thinking about all of these things, all these beneficial things, all these reasons why. I like to think that National Financial Awareness Day kind of sticks out and it gets me to thinking how cool is that a day that we can pause and reflect on financial wellness and financial awareness and that that's kind of our theme right guys financial awareness but be aware but also also have a plan and check this out we do it in just 30 minutes a week <laughs> Does it take some effort? Yes. Does it take some learning? Yes. Does it take some planning? Of course. Is it complicated? Not really. All you got to do is pay attention a little bit, do a little bit of study. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Like I said, even their website talks about how great it feels when you got your arms around these kinds of things, you know? So, What's our plan? Have we ever talked about what our plan is? Whatever our financial wellness plan is, guys? Well, don't I we have a five-step yeah. plan? Yeah. Oh, oh, would would you there's a five-step plan, really? Have we talked about that before? The the announcer knows. <laughs> Point one. Get rid of the credit cards. Point two, know your cash flow. Point three, pay off your debt. Point four. Develop an emergency fund, about three to six months of your expenses. And point five, put 15% of your income into 
retirement funding. And then really, some would argue there's a point six. What's that point six? Don't buy scratcher tickets. <laughs> it's broader than that. It's do whatever you want, man. Do whatever <laughs> you want. If you want to buy scratcher tickets and that's your entertainment, hopefully not your investment strategy, go for it. If you want to start putting money together for the kids to go to college, I'm digging it. If you want to buy a house, if you think you're going to be in the same area, you think property values are going to go up, that's great. If you want to retire early, I think that's great. It's really not that complicated these five steps but you know the devil is always in the details and that's what we talk about every single week 30 minutes nice and easy simple right on the way to work not hard to do but you just got to do it a little bit you know what do you think about that brian i think it's a uh, beautiful thing it's five steps we all need to be doing them hopefully we all are learning how to do it and uh, like you said, it's not difficult, but it does take planning. And I really like step six, do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very good goal to have. Do whatever you want. I mean, there's other people out there that have like a lot more steps and it just starts to get more and more complicated. Uh, you know, some people don't want to buy a house. Some people don't want to put money together for their, their kids' education, but once you put yourself at that position where you're saving 15%, yeah, man, you can, you can do whatever you want. It just takes a little bit of, uh, just takes a little bit of reflection. And you know what? It occurred to me that this is, this is the right time of year to be able to have this kind of reflection, to be able to have this kind of thought process that national financial awareness day really kind of falls into a really good spot on the calendar. If you think about it, we're about 30 days, eh, maybe 40, 45 days past the halfway mark of the year. And a lot of us had financial goals at the beginning of the year. And then they all went to hell in a handbasket <laughs> about the middle of March. And then as we seem to be coming out of that, it went to hell in a handbasket when we had all sorts of other issues come up. So we've been really distracted, really pushed off course. The coronavirus really messed things up. And that's why we're calling this the coronavirus edition this time. You know, it is a coronavirus edition because we got pushed off of these goals with the CV. So the question is, how are you doing? How are you doing after this six month period has gone by? You doing okay? Are you making your goals? Because if you are, you're probably abnormal at this point. You're probably a little bit abnormal. But maybe it's time to modify those goals. Maybe it's time to change them up a little bit. And you know what? That's okay. That's okay. In fact, this year, I would say it's even okay to blow all of those goals out. You might have very different goals now. One of my goals is to... Uh, live through the end of the year. How about you guys? I think all of this is a great reminder that we constantly need to be ready to pivot. And I also agree with you, Dave, you know, there's the traditional goals are now being adjusted for, you know, finances this year. We still, we still have our five steps, but we also have to, you know, plan. Maybe right now it's a little more important to make sure that we have, um, you know, three to six months, you know, of expenses, you know, saved up. Maybe you divert a little out of retirement to make, you know, like maybe I'm going to go up to eight months right now, just in case with all the stuff going on. But we keep our eyes set on the prize long term, but we adjust and adapt and pivot short term, I think. No, I mean, absolutely. I remember um, um, a speaker one time talking about, hey, a jet takes off from L.A. and it's headed to New York and it knows it's going to go to New York and that's where it's going to end up. But maybe uh, five, six, seven times during the course of the flight, there's going to be an in-flight course adjustment. And I just think that this year is going to be a big in-flight course adjustment for a whole lot of people, for a whole lot of crazy reasons. 
But who would have thought, you know, I heard someone refer to the good old days as January. I mean, think about it. A lot's gone on this year. Oh, have you guys heard those? I mean, not plugging any advertising agency, but those Geico spots that are on the radio? No. Uh, no. I heard it on Sirius. Uh, but they're doing flashbacks of, remember what it was like to go to uh, a baseball game and have to go to the bathroom? And the audio is of some guy going, excuse me, pardon me, pardon me, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, sorry, excuse me. And he's working his way down the aisle and the crowd cheering. And the, the tagline or whatever is something about, hey, you can't go to a ball game anymore, but with Geico, you can still save 15% or it was just <laughs> running a whole series like that. So classic, classic. Well, I was thinking a year, a year and a half ago, a year and a quarter ago, I actually got to to meet the lizard at the uh, Berkshire Hathaway event because they they own Geico and the lizard was there. Big celebrity handing out oh, autographs, oh, pictures, nice. the whole thing. Now, now you couldn't see him. No, no gathering for Berkshire this year. It was all online. You get a picture with him or a cardboard cutout? No, no, it wasn't even a cardboard cutout. It was the real dude, the real deal. The real lizard was there. <laughs> yeah. So it's a different, different, different kind of world. But we can adjust those goals a little bit. We've got, what, three and a half, four and a half months, whatever it is. We can still accomplish some things. We can still take advantage of the current economic condition and try to put together something to our, our financial benefit. You know what I've really been interested in, guys? I'm seeing so many people selling masks on the internet. And they have slogans on them and stuff painted on them. I mean, all you could right. get at the beginning was like a blue one and a white one. And now yeah, they've got I, all these colors and I, patterns. I actually just purchased one from uh, Etsy. Uh, have you heard of the company Etsy? Yeah. And so it allows small businesses to make their own designs and, you know, still make a profit. And they actually had a really good quarter last quarter. And I got a, I got a personalized mask that uh, I don't think it's appropriate to say what's on the mask for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can hold it up so the rest of us can see it on the Zoom. <laughs> let me grab it oh my god this is gonna look like something like the back end of a horse or something i don't know can we do that legally hold it up on the the video portion of the zoomer and uh yeah, as long as we don't air this episode uh, <laughs> let's see here we go oh my god yeah we probably don't want to probably don't want to get into that yeah it's not that bad. It's not but, that uh, bad, but you know what? You'll 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 uh, piss at least half the people off, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So anyway, there you have it. Happy Financial Awareness Day, everybody! Use this as an opportunity to pause and reflect, adjust your goals, and appreciate how important it is to have a sense of financial awareness or a sense of financial wellness. Happy Financial Awareness Day, guys. Happy Financial Happy Awareness Day, Dave. There you go. I think that's a wrap. This is Dave Hagan, and you're listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast. You've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to financial success. If you have a question that you would like Dave to answer on the podcast, go to thefinancialwellnesspodcast.com. You can leave an audio message with one click of a button or type your message into the question box. Either way, it's sent right to Dave's phone. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you receive the new episode notifications. Let's listen in now as Dave answers some emails. All right. Brian's got a fistful of emails, but uh, there's one from Chuck, Brian. Why don't you read that? Tell me what's up, Chuck. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> um, okay, Dave, the uh, email reads, Dave, I would like your advice. I recently inherited from my grandmother a house in the local mountains. It's free and clear and worth about 200000 I am so honored that she left it to just me. However, I also have some financial issues. I owe about 90000 in personal loans and credit cards. I also owe 50000 in student loans, but... I don't consider those real loans because I never graduated and never got any benefit from them. My wife and I were making about 100,000 a year, but we recently had a child and she will not be working for some time. 
This will reduce our income about $30,000 a year. I figure we can pay our current expenses, less the credit card payments on our reduced income. I would love to keep my grandfather's place because it is a legacy property. Also, relaxing up there on the weekends would increase my ability to earn an income because I'm in sales. And finally, my dad just says I have it coming to me. But with COVID-19, is any financial plan safe? What would you advise me to do? Thanks, Chuck. Oh, Chuck, what a cool thing to get a... Wow, that's amazing, yeah. That, uh, to get a place in the mountains. But you know, guys, I think what I got to say is, <sighs> place got to go. Chuck's got too much going on in his life otherwise. He's got uh, a reduction in income. He's got a new kid to take care of. Um, man, I hate to sell him, uh, have him sell that legacy property, but, you know, he's, he's probably already spent it. He's already probably spent the money from that. Here's what I would do, Chuck. You know, I would sell that property, hate to say it, but I'd, I'd sell that property. And then I would use that money to pay down the, the personal loans and the credit cards. And I'd use it to pay down the student loans. Those are real loans, buddy. I know it doesn't <laughs> feel like they're real, but they're real. And they're, and they got to be paid. I remember when I came out of college, they had what they called an exit interview. And they'd sit down with you at a table, line everybody up. One at a time they go, now, you know these uh, student loans, these really have to be repaid. A lot of people don't think they do. And I go, well, it's a loan, right? And they said, but you, it's really surprising how much, uh, how many people think that they don't have to repay it. And, um, you know, I mean, it was $600 uh, back then. It was back in the day. And um, I had to make a plan to repay those over, you know, some, some period of time. So they're real. They'll come get you eventually. You may not hear from them for a long time, but they will come and get you. And your income is going down. Uh, your wife can't work for a while. I'm sure she'll be back at it probably fairly quickly, but right now you just don't know. And if your current expenses are just going to pay the credit cards, man, get that 200 or as close to it as you can get pay off the credit cards as much as I hate to say that. And I know a lot of people don't see credit card is real debt either. It seems nebulous because you don't even know what you got. It's meals. It's, you know, electronic stuff. It's toys. It's trips. It's whatever stuff that you no longer have or can see or can grab or can feel for the most part, but pay those down, pay the student loans down, pay them off. And you're going to have maybe, I don't know, 50, $60,000 left over. And here's what I think about. I'd put some of that in a uh, emergency fund. And I would put some of that in an educational fund for your daughter. Did he say daughter? I just assumed it was a daughter. Um, no, he just identified him or her as a child. A child. So a boy or girl. But if you take $25,000, $35,000 and put that into uh, a fund and think about that doubling every seven to 10 years, by the time they're in school, there's what, two cycles, three cycles? That could be a real significant amount of money. That could be 70, it could be $100,000 by the time they're ready to go to school. And if, if they don't go to school, it can be used for other things, but it'd be nice to have at least a substantial portion of their uh, education taken care of. And yeah, you don't have the place. And, and, and I love the fact that you tried to sell me on keeping it by saying that it would help your, uh, your income earning uh, capability because you're in sales. Um, uh, I love that. Nice try, but I love that. It's just not really the way to go, dude. Think of uh, your mother's or your grandmother's legacy as helping getting you to break even so that you can start fresh. When your wife goes back to work at that point, you guys are going to be used to living on 70 and you can bank the 30. And 20 years from now, you can buy an even nicer, bigger, badder place um, with the money that you've been able to, to save up. You know, that's what I would do. And, and I think this whole thing is just further made difficult, made problematic by, you know, the whole COVID thing. Um, you know, it's added all this risk and uncertainty um, and we don't know. And I think it's, you know, it's made it so plainly apparent that we need to focus even more on that emergency fund in, in case stuff happens. Um you just don't know how it's going to play out. And unfortunately, if you, if you sacrifice the, the place in the mountains, it's going to allow you to 
get where you want to be with less risk and and more peace of mind. Any thoughts, so Dave, guys? Dave, I have a question for you. I know yeah, this goes outside the scope of what Chuck is asking us, but why not consolidate the debt and then, you know, refi it? Well, take money, basically take money out of the, the lake house and use that to pay off the credit cards. Yeah. I mean, yeah. all you're doing is you're converting those credit cards then from maybe an average of what we say nationwide credit card debts, 18%, yeah. taking it down to maybe three, 4%. The, the problem is while that might've been plausible um, before the child was born with the child being born, the income is left and less, and it doesn't help us with the student loan. I mean, I guess right. you could loan the thing out, you know, borrow out to the hilt, borrow a buck 50 out of the house and then pay off the student loans and, and the credit cards. But you've still got the problem where you're starting a family, your income's less, all of the risk issues are much greater. I don't know. I, I think the smart move is to sell it, even though, you know, I hate to do that. What do you think, Brian? Yeah. It's you're, you're a guy in the mountains kind of guy. I know you. I know. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I, looking for a way. You know, all the laws are changing about these Airbnbs and what he could do. Cause I, Nick, I was going down the same road that you were doing and I'm going, all right, he can he refi and then post it on you know airbnb but you know depending on what state you're in what there's the, the laws are all changing on what they have to do and what counts as you know cleaned between guests that stay there um i don't know maybe somebody with deeper pockets is going to be willing to pay 250 for it because they know that they can figure out the laws and eventually turn a profit. But I think I'm leaning more towards you, David, and it might be time to take the money, do a little reset and um, yeah, get an even cooler house in the local mountains that he can pass on to his grandkids. Yeah. I mean, they say what short-term pain for long-term gain. Yep. And it seems like this is one of those, one of those times where that's something that, that needs to be done. But yeah, I mean, it's an interesting point. If you could rent it out and generate some income, now it's spinning off some income might help you with the credit cards. But what if, what if the weather goes bad? What if, you know, there's a, there's a, a spike in the cove, in that part of the country. I mean, you just, you just don't know. Those are all risk things that you're taking on at a time where you've got uh, one bread runner who's, uh, you know, down for the count, even though it might be a short period of time. And we've got all these health issues out there. I don't know. I don't know. Tough to have to, um, you know, get rid of an inheritance or a legacy, but I, but I think it's the, I think it's the thing to do. I mean, if it's in the local mountains, I'm assuming it doesn't have high overhead. You got real estate taxes and insurance that you have to keep on it. Maybe you... property tax. Yeah. Water, power. If well, you're it also depends tax. on the state. It really depends on the state. Like if you, yeah. if it's in, you know, Delaware, where property tax is very low, it's going to be much different than New Jersey or California. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be prepared to have someone go in there and spray for the cove between tenants. I just want them to keep the house. I know, I know, me too. But you know what? The the, the smart move is not the smart move. Yeah, I I concur, Dave. I'm I'm on the Dave boat on this one. <laughs> Sorry about that, Chuck. We tried. Let us know how that turns out. That's all the time that we have for today. We've got Nicholas up in uh, down in San Diego. We've got Brian Reed up in Seattle. Dave Hagen in Lake Arrowhead, California. Wishing you all the best and a happy Financial Awareness Day. This is Dave Hagan, and you've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast. You've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to financial success. If you have a question that you would like Dave to answer on the podcast, go to the financial wellness podcast.com.
You can leave an audio message with one click of a button or type your message into the question box. Either way, it's sent right to Dave's phone. Remember, Dave will randomly draw from the submitted questions and pick the winner of a free one hour personal conversation with Dave to help you achieve your financial goals. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you receive the new episode notifications or share the podcast via the app with your family and friends. This is your announcer, Nick Appel, wishing you every financial success.